Jan Doyle. Welcome to Wise Talk. Tonight's guests, we have the luxury of having two outstanding photographers, Tom and Lisa Kuchara. Now, Tom, you have some initials after your name, M-N-E-C. What does that mean? <laughs> or, or maybe Lisa can help you. Lisa can help me. <laughs> it means he's a master member of the New England Camera Club Council. And sure. that's great. And you know what? Who, who remembers things like that, Tom? You are he's, so he's humble, and he, he earned yeah. it through all the hard work he did. But yes. it's, that's it's hard to it remember. Yeah. I don't pay attention. To no, those no. I'm sorry. And uh, Lisa, you have a lot of. You, first of all, you have a PhD. And okay. what's your PhD? That's what she remembers. Molecular immunology. Well, hey, that just rolls <laughs> off one's tongue. And you're honorary NECCC, and you're also a master craftsman. What does that last one mean? Master craftsman is through the Professional Photography Association of America, PPA, and it means that they have recognized that I am a distinguished teacher of other photographers. So mm -hmm. it's a distinction given to certain people that have kind of earned the right to say, we're a good teacher. We love to give back and inspire people and have light bulbs go off. Well, that's actually absolutely true. You, uh, you've you been longtime members of the New Haven Camera Club. Oh. We're I know you from and you have been so helpful and so free with the information and helping everybody get to the next level or even just introduced it but my favorite story about you and Tom <laughs> my absolute favorite story and I'm not telling the public this is going to happen to them too but you're <laughs> married and how did that come about the New Haven Camera Club is responsible for this. Gary, Tell us the Gary story. Gary Prestash and Vic Krasenik, you know, like to photograph birds, and they like setups. Mm -hmm. So they thought we were a couple of birds. Ah! <laughs> we found and ourselves. Every, every time I go to a, on a workshop, Lisa's always in the back seat of the car. Uh -huh. We didn't find ourselves in the back In the, the, the same yellow dress with the polka dots. <laughs> Funny that you remember it—the yellow dress with polka dots. And I tell you, what is she doing here? Is she and doing? Lisa, and Lisa says she didn't wear that every single no, time. But that's, that's all I remember. remember. That's all you remember. So you're in the back seat of the car, and you're talking photography. I'm and too so afraid to talk. You're too afraid to talk. Were you really? No. And so then, how did we progress from the back seat to the marriage vows? Well, actually, he had a coworker that was married no, to she, someone she in my lab. Long email. Right. Would you like yeah. to go out with yeah. me? It was a long email. <laughs> she still has it. Wow, and so she's the one who started. I asked first, yes. And, and <laughs> I'm assuming you said yes. Yes. Well, he sent back a picture of a frog and said, would you like to photograph a frog or kiss a frog or... <laughs> <laughs> oh, how cute is that? So love, love happens at the New Haven Camera Club. And so you're married, and I think that's wonderful because it's a very, um, it's a very uh, working relationship that you mm -hmm. both share a passion for, and you're both outstanding photographers. So that's my favorite story in life. But you're also the backbone and of the New Haven Camera Club, and you give so freely. Now, you've written a book, and the title of the book is going to be coming up on the monitor, but I have a copy of it here, too. It's called Create Fine Art Photographs. And how did this book come about? Um, basically, there was a scout for Amherst Media, and his job is just to look at people's websites and find new photographers, so what a great job that is. And he called us up one day kind of out of the blue and said, you know, I know you're known for people, and I know you're known for nature, but we've just been on your website, and we see all this urban exploration that you're doing, this uh, high dynamic range photography, and would you like to write a book? And we're like, yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> and, and it's absolutely a fantastic, and you wrote something in here uh, that was very very sweet but this book is absolutely fantastic and some of the pictures that we're going to be showing you and I was so I have to write my books <laughs> I I think it comes from my college days or but as a teacher but I have to write and circle and I was I had gotten this before I, you talked about the interview and I was so glad I had already written in the book because it wasn't like I was faking it but it's an absolutely <laughs> wonderful book um, let's go to the next first slide that we have up on the media. Now, this, I have to say, I love the picture of Tom holding the cat. You took this picture, we were talking earlier, about 14 years ago. Yeah. Tell me about this picture. 
So this was, um, yeah, about 2005, and this was Socrates. Um, we went to pick up a cat, and we would wanted a kitten. We ended up actually getting him and his brother. We were supposed to get one cat. We ended up with two cats. One cat? And they, they were, you know, inseparable. They're, they're great, great cats. And when they were kittens, they let us kind of do everything with them, with us. And I just had Tom pick it up, and I photographed him. And this kitten is just sitting here so little in, in the ball of his hand. And, I mean, later on, this cat weighed about 20 pounds. So <laughs> he wouldn't be able to fit in there when he got to be a full-grown cat. But they were the, the, the best brothers, best cats. I, lo I remember this picture from 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. And what, and I mean, I've seen a lot of photos since then. You've done some terrific work. And I, and I do appreciate it. But this is my favorite photograph in life. Look at that little munchkin. Yeah. And I remember when he first came up on the screen at Camera Club, I go, oh, my God. <laughs> now, the one on the left, is that his brother? It doesn't look no, like No, so it. that one is actually taken last year, and that's our um, Tom's sister's cat. And we went over, and I said, I want to do a little photo shoot with this, with this kitten. And the cat was so cooperative as a cat. And at one point, it got off the bed, and we thought, oh, that's the end of the photo shoot. It went to the bathroom, came back on the bed, and sat in the basket, and like, come here for more. Wow. <laughs> very, very cooperative cat. Very cool. <coughs> and so the next picture coming up that we're going to see on the monitor is, now this might be a little hard for the audience to grasp. What is this? So the picture on the left is actually an old car door. It's rusting away and the handle's there. And the picture on the right is kind of the after. It's the Photoshop where I've actually mirror imaged it and then distorted it. Oh, now that's <coughs> interesting. Now I know the two of you are very, very big into Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to someone at Camera Club the other <coughs> night, yeah, and sorry. they said that if you don't do Photoshop, you're kind of behind the eight ball now. Is that really true or not? No. No. You know, you got Lightroom, you have other other programs that allow you Sorry. to simply edit pictures. Or Photoshop, there there is a learning curve. There is a huge There's learning. so much yeah. you can do straight out of camera. You yeah. can be very, very creative. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so it doesn't have to be just Photoshop. But you do, a, you, and I like how you're showing us the before and after. Yeah. And honestly, I like the picture before where you showed just the door handle and mm -hmm. a tight crop. Mm -hmm. That's a great tight crop. And you are really, you love, um, you love rusty things. We love rusty things. That's why she married an older man. <laughs> <laughs> now that's cute. <laughs> All right, going on to the next picture. Um, now this is not rusty. This is a before and after this shot. This is a before and after. So this was a, a flower that was taken, you know, right after it rained. And the background sometimes is hard because it can be a little bit distracting. So I put a texture on the background. You want the texture just to kind of blend into the image really nicely and subtly and kind of take away some of those distractions in the background. And you've you've given a lot of Photoshop um, information to actually free to the members of the New Haven Camera Club. I think I'm one of the slowest learners of Photoshop in my life, and I know that I know that. But um, I was at a workshop with you, and the people who got it first and didn't need much help were at the beginning, and I was the last <laughs> seat in the back. I had tons of help, but it was an excellent way of handling it. So um, we have some more images that we're going to be looking at. And when it, now this is phenomenal. So this is a, another before and after. And again, the picture that um, Tom actually photographed her where you could see her, her face and she was from another country and kind of Tom asked if he could take her picture. But I like the silhouette with the sun behind her. And then through blend modes, also in Photoshop, I like the, it looks like you ran a sparkler and kind of ran around her, her body. So a lot of times I like using light to be able to draw your eye to the subject. So you didn't do that. You didn't do that with like light painting. You did it in Photoshop. That I did in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next image, we are going to see. Now, when we were doing a, during a, we did a run through of these pictures before we started taping, and Rob, the director in the control room, when he saw this, he went. Wow. <laughs> and this is a wow image. How did you take something like this? Um, this is actually in my front yard. Uh, dragonflies tend to go to the same space over and over and over again. So if you're patient and don't kind of chase a dragonfly, but just kind of wait for it to come back to you. So I put out flowers and I put out a, bl a blue background because I wanted there to be no houses or grass or trees in the background and just kind of waited for him to, to come to me. And he looks like he's got a, like a, you know, a character face. 
face. You can see like yeah. like like almost a human face within or a dog face within the dragonfly. Yeah, and actually, if I could see a monster movie with his face, I mean, that would be scary. <laughs> now, I think so. you just said something very interesting. You put a blue background. How, do, how would the... How would a photographer do put up a blue background? So you could go to Staples and just buy a cheap piece of construction paper or foam core paper, or you could actually print a background. So sometimes I'll actually intentionally take a blurry picture and then I print it and then I use it as a background. So if I go to Longwood Gardens and there's faucets and electrical outlets and I don't want them in my picture, no, no. <laughs> I'll just put the background right behind it and use that. Well, how as do the you background. keep it there? Um, a little clamp usually. Uh or you um, have a husband. Well, we don't do that, but I actually do know of a, of a couple, and I, for years I didn't know how he got the pictures he got, and then one day I saw his wife walking around next to him, and she would just put this quickly behind the picture, and then she would put it away. He didn't really let on. That uh, It took us a little while to catch very, on. Very quiet about it. Yeah. His name is Harold. <laughs> <laughs> But nobody knows it's his skin. <laughs> so he kind of inspired us to create some of these backgrounds. You know, that's so funny because anybody in the New Haven Camera Club knows who that is. <laughs> years and years and years ago, uh, Sandy Sanderson uh, was yeah. a member who passed and we, everyone loved him. But one time he had pictures of flowers and it had the rain going on it. And I was so impressed that they had these... Um, flowers with, and I think they were like um, some type of uh, lily or whatever, and it was raining. And then he said, "Oh, my wife is over here with the hose, <laughs> shooting the rain on it." Because it, it, it was, it was just fabulous. So, so there are secrets to this. That, yeah. you know, that you didn't hear from me. Okay. <laughs> So but we love to share those secrets. We want other people to get good pictures as well. So if you, you know, come to a class or if we're in the camera club, we give away that information yes. to people. We love to be able to inspire other people to get the same mm -hmm. kinds of pictures. Yes, so. that is true. That's very true. Okay, moving on to the next picture. Now this is really something. So this is the lunar eclipse, and this was something that we really had to kind of work hard to plan because the weather kept changing, and originally we were going to go to upstate New York, and then we heard it was going to be clouded over. So we had to change plans three or four times. We eventually ended up in Rhode Island at the Frosty Drew Observatory, and we got there really early before the crowds came, and I took a picture of the observatory and light painted this, so used a flashlight and actually light painted it. And then once the crowds came, I kind of had the base for my picture to be able to put the, as the eclipse happened, and put that on there. So I just kept my tripod in the exact same position for the entire eclipse, and then just sequentially took pictures as it got more and more uh, eclipse. And it was kind of proof that the Earth is round, so it's kind of fun to be able to look at it as well. Because if you, you know, think about people saying like the Earth is still flat, well, no, I have proof the Earth is really round. I see its shadow. And then uh, once the moon went to complete, you know, um, uh, you know, red, um, the Milky Way came out, and you don't normally see the Milky Way during a full moon, and everybody was just like, wow. So I had taken eclipses before. Tom and I photographed them mm -hmm. right in Hamden. But we wanted something that had a little foreground in it and a little bit more impact to the, to the picture. Well, that, that's interesting comments that you've made, but the, one of the most interesting not necessarily the most interesting, but you got there early, you took your foreground shot, you you spent it, it's not, you didn't jump out of the car, right. put out your camera, <laughs> click and hop back in your car. Right. And non-photographers don't understand that. Right. They they <laughs> think, well, you know, take the picture. One time, um, I was, I one time I said, well, we, we, we've just pulled up, get the picture and get back in. You know, they just don't get it. So these are some phenomenal pictures. And then coming up, we have something else coming up, which is a really nice shot that you took. Now, where would you find a picture like this? These are wolves, aren't they? Yes. Okay. Mexican wolves. Mexican wolves. Did you go to Mexico? No, we didn't go to Mexico. <laughs> where did you get these? This was taken at the uh, Wolf Conservatory in, in Salem. Yes. New York State. There are some of these places around that people can just mm -hmm. go to locally, uh, rehab centers, and they get some phenomenal shots. Yes. Great shot. Moving, moving to the next slide. Now, this is adorable. Explain this. Well, this is, uh, you know, the stork brought the baby to the, the human parent's house. But then 
on a, a return trip, he mistook the baby for a puppy. <laughs> he came to our house. <laughs> and that puppy's Kodak. But it was our interpretation of what do you do with a new babe, newborn, and we decided to put Kodak in in the sling like a, a newborn baby. Well, I know you, I know uh, you take portraits as uh, uh, part of your business, and that's mm -hmm. a wonderful way of, of taking the portrait of a baby. But there are a lot of people who have who consider their their animals babies. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, and, too, yeah. you know, yeah. there are their babies, and he's what kind of dog is this? this is a beautiful dog. Springer's English Springer Spaniel. Oh, that's a very female. That's a. Did you ever mate her with other dogs? No. 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 That's a beautiful, beautiful dog, yeah. and I love her name, Kodak. Yes. <laughs> I used to have a cat named Kodak. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a cat, Kodak and Fuji, because <laughs> I I didn't like to show favorites. <laughs> you know, but but I I loved Kodak. So uh, and then here's the also one of the I, this is my favorite photo. We had to have this next to me. Just for a minute, I want to say, Lisa, you are. I don't know how you find it, but she has <laughs> sneakers here, and I know they're not going to show on the monitor. But these sneakers have cameras on them. You know, oh my God, these are absolutely phenomenal. I'm kind of a little obsessed with photography. Yeah, and so I mean, who, and then I see, um, Tom, you have a t-shirt, or a sweatshirt rather, with one of your uh, images on. You like to take yeah. pictures of old cars. Yeah. So, you know, you're kind of walk, breathe, and live, walk, eat, and breathe photography. Yes. <laughs> and then, I, Lisa, I didn't say this to you because I was talking to you about other things. But your earrings are cameras. <laughs> I have camera earrings. And I actually have them in three colors. I have them in blue and purple and green. So. <laughs> oh my God! Blue. They're little cameras. I mean, I really have to find some of these things. These are just amazing. And I know at Camera Club once you brought in, you had a pair of sneakers that were too small for you. Yes. And you were going to send them back, but you let me raffle them off mm -hmm. to them. And there was a high, high, high interest in those sneakers. So getting back to some of your pictures. So you do nature, you do you have a portrait studio, you do um, some other things, but we have another image coming up. And where was this taken? So this is actually a composite image. The um, background is the New York Public Library, and then the model was actually taken in our studio. In the winter months, we like to bring, bring in models and just kind of have fun and explore and try some different things with them. Now, the New York Public Library, I, I've never been there. It's on my list of places to go. Mm -hmm. But that's that's very interesting. I know you do a lot of, at the um, Grand Central, too. Yes. You know, so we, we love going to any place that has dramatic architecture to it. But also sometimes just to an old graffiti wall or an old brick wall. You can have a lot of fun photographing people. Tom just recently did a whole shoot at a brick wall. And um, the, 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 the pictures came out really different compared to, you know, the contrived type of pictures. Mm -hmm. We try to, like her, she's looking a little mm -hmm. contemplative there. Mm -hmm. Try to get people to have a mood. So we'll say to them, uh, like, Oh, your your sister stopped by and she just brought you a new Mercedes and then oh no, she decided to keep it for herself. So we kinda, you know, give them some emotions to play through or a really prized moment or whisper sweet nothings in, you know, your loved one's ear and try to give them some emotions. Before we um before we were started taping, you told me what you do with little kids to get them excited and, <laughs> yes. and get them. What do, what do you do? So it's hard because now everybody has a camera and so when a kid sees a you know, a little kid doesn't matter if they're one year old or seven years old, they see a camera, they immediately are like, cheese, and that's not really the picture we want. We want more of a natural laugh. So one of the things I'll have little kids do is count with me, and I'll go one, two, three, and they're counting with me, and then I'm like, five, seven, nine, and they're, they start to laugh hysterically yeah. that this adult doesn't know the numbers. Little do they know this adult has a PhD. <laughs> now, we'll move on to the next picture, and the next picture is very, very interesting because I, it's, I love this picture. What a beautiful picture. I want to know who got the butt end, though. Was that the father or the mother? <laughs> it's the dad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and what we a... do kind of tell parents, like, you're probably going to get wet during this photo session, so bring some extra clothes. So, oh. And it, it could happen. 
Um, we love getting the babies when they're like under three weeks old because they're still all kind of squished up like that. They sleep a lot. They haven't quite figured out that their legs stretch yet. Yes, yes, So yes. I love getting them when they're really, really little. So we try to really talk to the moms during the maternity shoots or talk to somebody we know is coming in for a newborn shoot and say, really, we know you're going to be tired, but it's worth coming in before they're just, you know, 10 days old or two yes, weeks old yes. or something. Yeah, you're right about the legs. Yeah. You're right. All right, going on to the next particular image. Um, this is this is a mirror image? No, nope, this is actually a panoramic image. So it's actually all the way down one hall, and then you see into a cell at Eastern State Penitentiary. And this is actually the Red Barber Chair. So the penitentiaries used to actually have places where you, as a prisoner, could get your hair cut, or you as a guard, or bring your family in to get it. It's very different than what we think about today for prisons. So it's a panoramic image, meaning that it actually goes from kind of a 180 degree view from one end to the other end. And you took it at the same time, or? Um, this is actually a stitched image. So this is actually where I have my camera vertical, and I actually am moving the camera from like left to right from one end to the other end. OK, that's a good mm -hmm. point. Now, I believe I think I know the next one that's coming up is the Catskill Game Farm. I'm not 100% sure. Ah, oh, I was right. Mm -hmm. I went there when there were animals there. Yes, mm -hmm. so did I as a kid. <laughs> but there's no animals, and you went back. Yeah. When we went back, they, they opened up the place for photographers, for a fee, of course, <coughs> and all the cages and uh, spaces that the uh, animals stayed at were are, are closed. And it's kind of interesting, a little ghostly, you know, but... It's kind of like life after humans. They have, like, yeah. acres and acres yeah. and acres of this vast zoo, and you're, like, the only ones there. Um, we get to go in the monkey house. We basically got to like see. I put my little Kermit on the little monkey swing and took pictures of them. We got to go in where the lions mm -hmm. were. The giraffe house. You could actually see where the giraffe's necks had rubbed the paint off the walls as they were kind of waiting to get out in the morning when they were let out in the morning. Um, the inside mm -hmm. of the rhinoceros house, and then you see these big, huge, massive, you know, pillars to make sure the rhinoceros didn't get out. But we were on the inside rather mm -hmm. than what you. That is a different experience. Yeah. It is, mm -hmm. and so then um, I think we have one more that I want to talk about. Um, yes, this now this is beautiful. This is on the Hudson. This is Bannerman Castle. It's uh, an island on the Hudson River, and it used to be a I think a private man. Pri private mansion years mm -hmm. ago. It's closed and it's in state of ruin, like the uh, Roman Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And just before, uh, and shortly after that, they started to um, put up, uh, you know, struts and things, you know, to scaffolding. fix scaffolding to fix it. So now they're restoring most of it. Well, that's something. That'll be something yeah. to see afterwards. I have to tell yes. you, um, although your images from the studio are phenomenal that you do in the studio work, mm -hmm. and the other images that you showed are phenomenal, you really do have a reputation for being something else. You have a <laughs> reputation for being a frog whisperer. <laughs> and I know you're writing a book on frog whispering, yeah. but at one it's point it's written. It's already written. It's, it's been written. a publisher. Oh, okay. We, I know. I think we have. We, we hopped to it. <laughs> we hopped right to it. But you had at one time you had over 200 frogs. Yeah, that is correct. Um, he made the mistake. He knows I'm pretty intense, and he made the mistake of saying, "Well, go buy some frogs and photograph them." So I, was I did. <laughs> you were very naive. <laughs> So you so, had 200 frogs in your house? Yeah, well, the third bedroom was kind of created into this terrarium room where along three lines are all different cages, all with individual different species of frogs. And then the fourth wall is where I photograph the frogs. So he'll come up and photograph the, the frogs and have some fun with it. And um, I get see, to hear I them. See, <laughs> I see the bit. look on your face. <laughs> now, and you, and what do you feed? You had to feed frogs live crickets. So crickets are fruit flies. For the, so some of the frogs are really small. They're thumbnail frogs. They're really tiny. Um, other frogs are bigger, so bigger ones eat crickets, okay, little we, ones eat fruit flies. Flightless fruit flies, so you don't have to worry about them. We only out. have about five minutes left, so we sure. have to go to some of the frog pictures. Yeah. So i like to show the first frog picture up there. I mean, now, what are they? Let me out? Let me out? <laughs> this is a red-eyed green tree frog, kind of the poster child of frogs, and he's on a piece of acrylic. And um, Quinnipiac University actually put this on the cover, front and back covers of their alumni magazine, and they said, do you think you could do this? And they sent me a cartoon. And then immediately they were like, no, no, 
goes, you can't do anything like that. And I'm like, yeah, I think I can do this. And so I just put them on a piece of acrylic and then photograph them from the front and then flip the acrylic around and photograph them from the back. Wow. <laughs> so let's go to the next image. I love the one on the left. <laughs> I, that's, that's just phenomenal. Now, what kind of frog is that? He's an Amazon milk frog, and he has really cool eyes. They almost look like a, I don't know, like a chevron symbol or something. He's got like four yellow spots in his, in his eyes. And how tiny is he? He's about the size, like maybe an inch. Because yeah, but, about, on the, on the lead, that's, yeah. I know what a petal looks like, yeah. and that's a, so he's about an inch. Yeah. Hmm. And he's really a happy frog. A lot of frogs look like they're smiling, so they make me smile. They're happy <laughs> frogs. And taking care of them, wasn't that a tremendous burden? No, they're fun. They sing to us. If the dog barks, they bark back. When we he argue, was sick they bark. one time, they bark. If we argue, they bark. We don't do that often, but the, vac <clears throat> the vacuum cleaner goes. They, they start yeah. singing. Well, I remember I was at a workshop with the two of you, and you had your frogs yes. there. <laughs> and you're very protective of your frog. Yeah, so you have to make sure frogs have very thin skin. I mean, the reason they're known as the poster child for the environment is because they're so sensitive. So we make sure people, you know, wash their hands and make sure there's no lotions, any props, make sure that they're decontaminated either by microwave or boiling, you know, something to make sure anything we bring in aren't going to introduce. And you didn't stress your frog. I mean, you said no way. Yes. These the frogs rabbit. come first, not the photos. So these frog pictures, all of them, there are no frogs harmed or stressed. Mm -hmm. And they like being photographed because they know they're going to be fed afterwards. So. Well, <laughs> you photograph me and feed me, I'll be there too. All right, I think we have another image or two. Now, how cute is that? <laughs> so when I started photographing frogs, flowers and plants were the natural, and I had to buy pesticide-free flowers and plants. And then it got to be winter, and there was no more pesticide-free flowers available. So then I decided to start using Barbie furniture and fairy furniture. Now people actually give me props all the time. They're wow. like, oh, I just found a skateboard, or I just found a computer desk. Oh, a skateboard would be adorable. <laughs> yes. uh, going on to the next one, we have... Now look at this. This is. This I is... think this frog has to be what Kermit the Frog was modeled after. This is a glass frog, and he's actually transparent. You can actually see like his heart beating and all his internal organs. But that face has to be where Kermit came from. Where do you even buy a frog? Reptile shows. <laughs> oh, because I'm thinking I wouldn't even know where to go to get one. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, and then is there is there any more? I think there's one riding one a bicycle. More? Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so this was a prop that somebody had given to us, and you just kind of be patient and you wait for the frog to get on there. So this is the same frog and just waiting for him to kind of do different things as he's on the on the bicycle. And I just think it looks like he's kind of riding along, and he says, wait a minute, I better stop. I mean, you might be able to have an interesting conversation. <laughs> Works for me. We have very little time left. And I just want to know, if people want to contact you, uh, you're in the New Haven Camera Club, and you give a lot of things to the New Haven Camera Club. But if someone wants to contact you on their own, what is your web? What is your email or website? www.photographybylisaandtom.com. So if you uh, Google Lisa and Tom, you'll usually come up with us, or Google our last name, Kacharo, you'll come up with us. But www.photographybylisaandtom.com will get you to our website. Because I can really see people being interested. So you have, your next book is coming out, and we had a conversation. You have, oh my, and I believe this about you, you have eight more books in your head ready, Absolutely. bursting to come out bursting of you. To bursting to come out, come yes. out of you. That's wonderful. We love to write. We enjoy doing this project. And you, you have a comment that I wrote down here when we did a pre-interview, is creativity is contagious. Pass it on. Yeah. So it's an Albert Einstein quote, and I have used it now to be able to talk about photography, inspiring other people in camera and in Photoshop to take better pictures. Lisa, thank you so much for coming on the show. If um, people are interested in contacting her, you already have her email. If you forget it, you can contact me at jmdteach at comcast.com. Net. Thank you, RBC TV, whenever. Lisa, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know what I just realized?